Coach, uh, it's about that time again, huh? <laughs> Basketball season. Um, you know, just I think kind of the, one of the big questions is you obviously return a lot from last year. Um, where do you kind of maybe see the rotation playing out, how the, the minutes might shape up at each position? I know obviously you've got some some pretty secure spots with Charlize and Bella, of course, and, and some of your, your other returners, but where do you kind of see the rotation looking like? Well, right now we have eight healthy bodies, and um, I mean, uh, I, I feel like at the very least, I feel like we almost have seven starters. I mean, I really do feel confident in, in, um, um, in particular um, – L.A. coming off the bench and Jenna Villa coming off the bench, both Villas, but not related. Um, I think both of those bring just they're, – they're ready for this level in and, and lots of minutes. Um, Alex is going to give us great minutes, too, as the eighth person. Uh, she's going to give us tremendous minutes. She's just – you know, she's going to be just a difference maker every time she steps on the floor, and she's going to get better every single time she steps on the floor. So I couldn't be more pleased with just – uh, the eight healthy, we're still trying to get Kira Gardner back from a, a knee surgery, minor knee surgery. Um, uh, Kia is trying to get back, and then Jessica Clark's still getting back in the rotation. So depth is gonna should be something that really helps us this year. So when you, when you mentioned the eight, I assume the five starters would be Charlize, Yo, uh, Bella, Beyonce, and Tara? No, actually, Yo is still kind of on the sideline, too. She's another one that's injured. So we're talking uh, – I'm not sure who that left out. B – as the four coming in and taking Ula's spot, um, uh, obviously Bella, and then AT as, as, as – however, we play kind of two two point guards at the same time with Charlize and AT and then Tara in that third spot. You know, obviously you mentioned your three key bench pieces right now are all freshmen. Um, you know, you talked about uh, suddenly we're old at media day. Well, suddenly you've got some <laughs> some youth again. You know, how much do you think that they can lean on some of the veterans, though, and, and kind of come along quickly to be ready to play at this level and contribute in a big way? Yeah, I mean, we had a close scrimmage, and, and that group uh, had, I think, 32 points in our scrimmage against uh, another Division One team. So uh, just – they, they, they are – what they bring is just uh, – they're good basketball players. They bring a skill set that, that puts them on the floor and makes them successful. Um, L.A. is a guard that can, can kind of do everything. Jenna, obviously, with her shooting potential. Uh, and, yeah, I think it's a great confidence boost for all of those guys to know that they don't have to go in and star. Uh, they can just sit and watch and then come in behind some really seasoned – uh, veterans and and learn from that every single day and and again I think the biggest thing that's helped us more than anything is we brought these new players in but because we're so in our system now they picked it up a lot faster because everybody else on the court can get them in the right spots and and so the learning curve has been you know really steep for them but they've caught on and and get better at it every day. You know, we're, we're two weeks away from the, the season opener. It's, again, it seems like it, just the other day you guys were winning the Pac-12 title. But, um, you know, of those players you mentioned you don't have right now, do you expect any back by then, or is it just going to be those eight for the, that first game against Cal Poly? Uh, I don't think we'll have anyone back by then. Um, again, all of them are, are um, starting to uh, – they're, they're just not in contact yet. So maybe in, t- maybe in two weeks – they might be. Uh, I think another week from now they'll get back into kind of playing with us. So it's going to be early in the season that all of them are back. But um, uh, don't don't hold me to it. With uh, Charlize, I'm curious where you want to see her take her game this season. Like to her, like to you, what's kind of the, kind of the uh, next step in her development? Well, I think she's continued to uh, just you know there's specific things that we really wanted her to continue to work on, and and mainly her footwork and into her shooting. We just want that. I think she improved like six percent last year in her three point shooting. Overall, she was better. Uh, her field goal percentage was better. We just think if we can get again her from thirty five percent from three to forty, another five percent jump, she becomes you know unguardable, and. Um, you know, again, her work ethic all summer right now is amazing. Um, and then I think the other thing on that is, you know, she has a skill set for everything. She also needs to – I think this year we're finally in a spot where she doesn't have to take as many hard shots. I think she – we have weapons around her. I expect her assist numbers to go up. Uh, I expect her percentage uh, – shooting percentage to go up. I expect her turnovers to go down, and I think all of those are because um, she she may not have to feel like she has to carry the load every single night out. I mean, what a burden 
to have to be on our team and know that the only way we win is if I have to score 25 and I have to shoot a great percentage every single night. And and I don't think she feels that right now. And and uh, that's our hope is that we have a balanced scoring that um, – and I think it'll end up making her the game easier for her because she won't be triple teamed and double teamed on drives as much as she has been in the past. With some of these freshmen you're talking about being a key part of this rotation, you know, in whichever role, I'm just wondering as a team now with these expectations, what happened last year, how you kind of balance as a coach, allowing for some of those, you know, freshman mistakes and learning and growth, but also knowing that, you know, you have those higher expectations, trying to win all these games, just how you balance something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a constant. I think, um, again, they've stepped into a really elite culture, those freshmen, and and they've they've bought in and they want to be hold that standard high. I mean, the thing that you worry a lot with freshmen is they don't have the urgency that the upper class do. So the upper class are looking at those freshmen every day, going. Please understand, this is my last go around. Get this, you know, come to practice ready. Come with an expectation that I got to be great today. The inconsistencies of that mentality, you know, it's going to be in every freshman as they learn and grow. But gosh, when you walk into that kind of culture, uh, again, the bar is raised for them and, and they sense it and they understand it. And again, um, just great accountability in our gym right now. So I think the balance is there. I think the the, the 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 seniors are ready to be done with last year. We we uh, we don't need to talk anymore about last year. We just need to attack this year and see how good this team can be. And and again, I think everybody's really really excited about um, the team that we're going to be able to put on the floor today, this year. Obviously, you've moved on from last year, but you know, defending conference champions coming into this season, but you were picked fifth in the media poll. Is there any kind of chip on your shoulder with, you know, when you see something like that, or is it just like, hey, we got to go prove it on the court? Well, I mean, I thought Charlie in the media day at media, Pac-12 media day said it. She, we might be, we might be ranked higher than we ever have in the history of our program, uh, but I think everybody, every time we walk on the court, we feel like we're the underdog. I just think that's kind of the Washington State way. Um, I think most people walk on the court and think we can play with these guys and they think they can beat us. Uh, so I, I don't know that we'll ever lose the chip on our shoulder. Um, you know, the four teams above us are great, great teams, but it's shocking sometimes when you look at that ranking and you go, how did we leapfrog some of those guys? You know, some of the, the USC and Oregon and – and Arizona's that have been so phenomenal nationally for years and years. So we're doing really a lot of things right. Um, preseason rankings just almost mean nothing other than we get to talk a little bit about it. Uh, but really it just comes down to, you know, what are we going to prove, who are we going to be, uh, and, and trying to prove it every single day we walk on the court. And another name that's probably going to be a household name by the end of the season is Beyonce B there. Um, what have you just seen from her in the short time she's been on campus? Well, I say it, B, B is, um, is the easiest person to coach. Um, you know, the, the, the whole high, high maintenance, low, low maintenance, and then no maintenance. She's no maintenance. Um, she's really, every single day, I think she's getting more comfortable with where her shots are coming and how she can impact our spacing in our game. Um, I just think she's going to be a, a tremendous player for us. She's, she's by far um, going to be our leading rebounder. She just works at that. Uh, you don't really have to run plays for her, even though we need to. We need to put her in positions to really score. Um, but she's going to score anyway because of her work ethic and where she gets and, and how the ball comes to her. So easy person to play with. The players, uh, as a teammate, they love her. She just couldn't have fit in better with us. And, again, I think she's one of the reasons that we're really confident because it's that same mentality in years past. I'm, I'm sure Charlize has always felt like she's got to do too much. The burden's going to be spread around. Uh, you've got, you know, Bella with an uh, opportunity to be a double-double every night. You have B with an opportunity to be a double-double every night. Obviously, you have Charlize. There's just a lot of um, playmaking abilities all over our court. Those TV guys are on the same wavelength back here. I'm kind of going to build off both of those questions. Uh, with Beyonce, she just carried that Idaho team. Um, what's Is there any challenges coming with fitting her play style? I know you just talked about the burden being shared. Um, is there any challenges with getting her, Charlize, everybody to mesh? 
Yeah, I mean, I think we're talking a little bit about that. Um, I mean, I think they, I think B chose us because I think she really wanted to to win at the highest level, and she didn't choose us because she, you know, she had a, a position there to get 20 shots a game or 22 shots a game. Chances are she's not going to get that many shots in our gym, uh, but I, I think the the chance to win, the chance to win at this level. Um, I think really is what motivates her. Uh, but it is our responsibility to put her in position to to affect the game and to help us. And, again, she's someone you can count on. She's big, big moment player. Uh, she's not afraid of what's coming. Uh, she's going she's gonna to do whatever she can to help us win and succeed. And, again, she's going to do it unselfishly. So we got to get total buy-in from everybody on the court to – you know, there's a fine line of that moment where I can drive this and force this shot because that's – I'm good and I can get I can get shots off. Charlize could do it. Anyone on our team could. Or I could keep moving the ball and trust this and know that we'll get a better shot at the end. And we don't know who's going to shoot that. But that's the thing we're trying to buy into right now is when we move the ball, when we don't force too many things, really good things happen and we shoot the ball pretty well. So – that's a that is our our biggest job right now is to get our entire team believing that and and again I think we have a chance to to be that. Uh, and then the last question I have for you, coach, is you know we talk about finishing fifth. Is there a chip on your shoulder? But you've c consistently been building this program. It's you know getting better every year. Now it's at a point where WSU's not looked at as one of the bottom tier teams, one of the favorites here in the conference. What is it like for you and the players to head into a season where there are expectations for this team? Right. Well, I mean, you just can't ask for – that's exactly what you want. You want people to expect um, you to win. I, I think the other expectation is we want to have an expectation of people showing up in our gym and getting the fans behind this team. I think we've earned that. I think we, we need that. We need to create a home environment where – it's impossible to walk out of here with a win. Uh, there's nothing wrong with expectations. I want us just to be fearless in how we approach every game because we've prepared ourselves so well and we've done the work. And, and again, we trust that, uh, you know, we're going to work as hard as we possibly can and, you know, we don't feel the weight of the world on us every time we step on the court. I think that's freeing, and I think we can play pretty free this year because I, I do think um, – we, the weapons on the court make it easier to, to not put too many pressures on ourselves. Coach, how would you maybe say that all this is kind of uncertainty around realignment and you just, you know, all this, the, the conversation, the discourse and so on, have you seen it affect recruiting at all? Well, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, we lost a player, you know, at least uh, uh, so far to uh, another person in our league for that exact reason. Um, you know, it's a it's a conversation every single time you're talking to, to a recruit. You know, more more often with a, a kid from the states, you know, they really understand the conferences and understand that we're in a tough spot right now. Um, internationally, it, it still is a conversation, but maybe not quite as much. I think so much internationals they they choose you for relationships. That's all they know. They don't know near as much about the college game and how it it operates. Um, so we're going to continue to work both sides of it. We're going to we're going to be us. We again, I, I've told people before we were the worst budget out of the twelve in the league, and yet we won a Pac-12 championship. So we have the people in place. We have the support that we need. Um, we have. I think we bring some elite coaching, elite strength and conditioning, elite nutrition. I think we have the the facilities. I think we have the things that affect a kid's life every single day. And it's as good as anyone in the country. And uh, we're going to tell people to, to, you know, choose people, you know, count on people more than anything else. And if they do that, I think we'll still get the, the players that are fit for us. You know, we've seen some of the, the dollar signs that get thrown around when it comes to football. And how much have you maybe seen NIL impact recruiting? And, and I mean, where do you think you guys are at with that and kind of having it play a role? Yeah, it's going to continue to get – to be a bigger and bigger issue. It, it hasn't completely affected us now. Again, I say that because we were lucky enough to have maybe a couple of players that are so loyal. You know, Charlize probably could have gone anywhere she wanted and, and, and attracted some money. Bella probably had a lot of opportunities out there. 
I think they want to see this thing through and they want to leave a, a footprint behind them that's, you know, that that will be long lasting. And 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 they and getting players that aren't chasing the dollar right now is real important to us. So we got to recruit the right player. Uh, you know, we we definitely aren't in the NIL business, and we don't we don't compete at the level at all that other people can. I hope that continues to grow for our program, but um, it is another one of those reasons. You're going to have a conversation every every time you talk to a kid about money, and um, it's it's. It's here, whether we like it or not. And I'd like, I want to continue to grow it. I think we've got some great opportunities out there, but uh, um, it's not the reason to choose us. If, if you want a big money NIL deal, you're probably not going to choose uh, Washington State right now. You mentioned just a minute ago, you called Beyonce no maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. Probably fair to say when Bella got here, she was on the opposite end of the <laughs> spectrum at high maintenance. How have you maybe seen her? grow more and more towards the low maintenance, no maintenance. And we've talked about the switch that she kind of flipped last year before the season. And then did you see it kind of flip even further to where she, you know, you don't have to miss necessarily quote unquote babysitter as much as maybe you did in her, her first couple of years. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. I, th I think the thing that we've talked to Bella about that I've noticed more than any is I, I feel like at this point physically and her game is to a level where, you know, we don't have to talk about her quitting on plays and giving lack of effort. You know, she's gotten her fo her fitness and her strength and her her quickness and her explosiveness. It's gotten to a really high level. You know, emotionally, you know, that's the that's the still a little bit of a roller coaster because she's so high and low. I mean, she's just if if something great happens, you know it. And she jumps out of the gym and and struts and does all that stuff and shows ma major swag. And, but when things go bad, she gets a little low on that. And so evening that out and trying not to let, you know, the bad things, the, the way people play her, if she gets, she gets a bad call, the stuff, again, that is uncontrollable, you know, get it back to, you know, respond the right way and come and, and, and just affect the next play. And, and that's, the, that's the next step for her is to not be quite as uh, bothered by things that happen because just expect that they're going to come and again her response has got to continue to just grow and be great and it has it's getting better um, foul trouble is still something again I want her to average 25 or 28 point uh, minutes a game I think she's she's probably played 18 and 19 for us just because of foul trouble but those are the things that we're going to work the most on this year and I think she's going to make big strides Just wondering, we talked a little bit about, you know, kind of the underdog mentality and then the Pac-12 situation. If there's anything added to the season that it's kind of like one last run in what is known as this Pac-12 conference, a chance to like make one last statement to this league and what you can do in it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we won our first last year. Everybody's going to be hunting for the last one, uh, at least uh, with these teams in, in this league. Um, that's so exciting to think about. And again, it's exciting to think about it with the team that we have. Because again, I think we have a team that has an, uh, more, more than any in, our, in the history that I've been here, uh, we don't have very, as many holes in our game. We, we're, we're capable of playing different styles. We're shooting the ball better. I think we're a better rebounding team. I think we're a better um, defensive team. I think there's ways that we can we can change and adapt and be better every single time we step on the court. And, and that makes us a danger to anyone we play. Uh, lots of things can go wrong with that, but it's exciting to be on, on with this team knowing that um, the potential is there and the mindset is there. Now, got to catch some breaks, and, but I, again, I don't think this team fears playing anybody. And now it's just time to start the season and, and um, see where we are and get better as we go. And, again, our goal is to be playing great basketball in February and March. And now it's time to make that NCAA tournament and, and make a long run into the NCAA tournament. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Go Cougs.